Hi everyone, my name is Jakub and I'm a developer relations engineer for capturing reality. This is the second part of our tutorial series covering drone mapping in reality capture. In this one, we'll go over reconstructing the model, cleaning it and texturing it. Then we are going to create cross sections of the model. Without wasting any time, let's jump straight in. We'll pick up where we left off in part one and we'll continue working on this drone mapping project. Usually, we would adjust the reconstruction region with the box widget. But since this site is frequently mapped, we have the reconstruction region from the previous project. To import the reconstruction region, we'll go to the Mesh Model tab and click on Import Reconstruction Region. To export the reconstruction region, we can use this option over here. After clicking the Import Reconstruction Region button, we get this window, and now we have to select the RC box file and click Open. Right after clicking Open, Reconstruction region was adjusted in the 3D view. Now we need to click on Normal Detail to create the model. The shortcut is F7. Model reconstruction is finished, and now we can see the dense point cloud in the 3D view. It's good to save the project after model reconstruction, so press Ctrl S to save it. Before we proceed with any calculation and measurements, we should clean it to eliminate unwanted parts. Notice this sparse part of the terrain. It was caused by the insufficient coverage from the images. Reality Capture's algorithm also created some points at the bottom of the reconstruction region. We'll use the selection tools and filtering tool to clean the model. From the 3D tools context tab, we'll pick the lasso tool. Let's adjust the camera angle a bit, and with the lasso tool, we'll draw a shape around the area we want to preserve. Left click and hold to select the area. When done, just release the button and the area is highlighted. We want to preserve this part, so let's click on Invert to invert the selection. Now we could press Filter Selection to get rid of the unwanted part, but we still need to select some points at the bottom of the reconstruction region and filter out everything in one go. First, we'll disable the lasso tool. We'll use Select Marginal Triangles from the Advanced tool to add the bottom points. If we just click the button, it will override the current selection, but if we press and hold Ctrl and click the button, the points will be added to the selection. Alright, and now we can use Filter Selection. Now we are looking at the clean version of our model. We can always go back to the original one if we want to. When I expand this component in D1DS, this is the source model, so I can rename it. And this is the clean version we are looking at right now. We'll proceed with texturing the model. Let's check our settings first. They are located in the Mesh Model tab. I want the model to have a single 8K texture. The style needs to be set to maximal texture count and the count to be set to 1. If you want to define the size of the texel precisely, use Fixed Texel Size and set the texel size to custom. For example, it can be 5 cm. In that case, Reality Capture will create as many textures as needed to reach the 5 cm texel size. It can be 1, it can be 100. It depends on the project. If you want the best possible texture quality, use Optimal Texel Size. Well, what is the Optimal Texel Size? That can be calculated in the Unwrap tool here. Now you might be asking, well, why there are two Unwrap settings in two different places? When you use the Unwrap tool, it just creates UVs for the model with these settings. After you click Texture, it will use the created UVs from the Unwrap tool. If the model doesn't have UVs and you click Texture, RC will create UVs with the Unwrap located in the Texture settings. Ok, so one final check before I press Texture. And it all looks good. This is our cleaned and textured model. Now we'll proceed with the classification. Let's go to the 3D Tools tab and find the AI Classify tool. We have multiple types of classificators. When working on a larger drone mapping project, I start with the type that best describes my terrain. If I am not satisfied with the result, I will try all of the types. Then I would pick the best result and manually edit the classification to fine-tune it. We'll keep it at Mixed Landscapes, Construction Sites, Mines and click on Classify Model. It really doesn't matter that much because it's a small area and I will manually edit the classification anyway. The classification did a nice job identifying the cars, the bulldozer and shack as artificial objects. 
It also recognized some rocky areas as artificial objects, but we'll fix that. All I want is that these two cars, the bulldozer and the shack, are classified as artificial objects, and the rest will be the ground. Let's activate the lasso tool and select the entire terrain. To override the class, let's expand our model, model classes, classification, and select ground. Now when we click override, the whole selection will be set to ground. Now we'll use the lasso tool to select these two cars, like this. Now I am drawing a new shape, but before releasing the left mouse button, I will press and hold control, which will add to the current selection. Same for the shack. I will also draw a shape around it. When I press and hold control, a small plus sign is visible next to the mouse cursor. And I will repeat the process for this bulldozer one last time. This time we select the artificial object class and click on override again. Now the classification is ready and we will use it to create the mesh for cross sections and for making the digital terrain model. We no longer need the lasso tool and AI classify tool, so let's disable them. Now let's create the cross sections. To generate them, we need at least one model in the project, which we do. We can find the tool in the scene 3D tools tab. When the tool is activated, it opens a widget that is similar to the auto projection widget. Besides the standard editing options, this widget allows us to set up the cutting plane direction. By default, the cutting plane is set to be horizontal, but we can change the direction by clicking on these squares. At the same time, the widget displays a ruler that allows us to see a preview of the model cross sections by hovering the mouse cursor over the ruler. The first cross section starts here from the starting point that is indicated by these red arrows. Now let's take a look at the cross sections panel. The cross sections panel in the 1DS is very straightforward. The only value we can change here is the distance between cross sections. The value is in the project coordinate system units, in our case it's meters. Based on this interval, RC will calculate the resulting number of cross sections. When the interval is changed, also the ruler is updated in the 3D view. When we are satisfied with the preview, we can create them. After the computation, we can disable the visibility of the model so we can see them better. Cross sections are automatically displayed after the computation, but if we would like to disable or re-enable them later, they are a child object of the model and they can be found in the 1DS. They can be turned on or off by clicking on the eye icon, same as the model. The result is not exactly what I want. I want my cross sections to be from pure terrain, so let's create a new model. Let's select the artificial object class and filter selection. This will create a new model without any artificial objects. Now let's click on Close Holes. Now we can see the holes have been closed. Now we'll generate the cross sections one more time with the same settings. This time the cross sections are going through the closed holes. With the finished cross sections we'll end the video here. To recap, we reconstructed the model, cleaned it, textured it, and generated the cross sections. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. When you are ready, join me in part 3, where we continue with the auto projection and auto projection tools. Also, you will find all of the tutorials from this series listed in the description below. Please feel free to drop your questions or thoughts in the comments. See you in the next one.